Hey, this is Otis Dyson, and today we're going to learn about grounding, grounding our home lab, our network, whatever data we have plugged into it. We want to make sure that everything is protected when we have those surges, when we have those uh, uh, thunderstorms. We want to make sure that everything is going to ride the storm very well. And to do that, we need good grounding, good grounding practices. We're going to learn some of that today. All right, good grounding is more than a safety measure. It protects our equipment from damage. It also improves the reliability of our equipment as well. I've been doing uh, grounding for <laughs> all my life, it seems like. And there are three major things that you need to really think about in your network or your, uh, your home lab. And the first one is, is obvious, yeah. Make sure that the grounding is good. Make sure that you have a really, really good ground common to start off anything. Because if you have that, then wow, it, you're already way ahead of the game, okay? The other thing is, is some sort of a UPS. Uh, a good UPS will go a long way especially if it has those uh, RJ45 connectors on the back of it, has an in and an out, you can run your data through there. Um, that'll, that'll take the brunt of, of a lot of surges, uh, uh, any, um, uh, any, any, any type of uh, lightning strike that comes in the area, static electricity, anything like that, it's gonna absorb most of that. So that's one of your biggest things as far as the protection goes in your network, but that won't stop at all. Uh, the third thing is shielded cable. If you have cameras outside, PoE cameras, or just uh, even the coax cameras going outside, if it's not shielded, and the good thing about coax is it, it is shielded. It's not like quad shielded or anything, but it's at least shielded, that's, that's uh, that's at least a good start there. But if you have PoE cameras and you have regular, say, Cat6 running out there, then you know any, any, any lightning in the area is gonna put off enough charge, enough static charge that could penetrate that cable, either go to the camera, go to the switch, pow, firecracker. We don't want that, right? So uh, yeah, those three things, if you have those three things in your network, then uh, you're almost guaranteed a good ride and not having your data equipment getting blown up in the process, okay? First, uh, let's, let's talk about grounding. All right, it all starts with a common ground point in a house or a building, wherever it is, usually located by the power meter and the uh, utilities that come into the place. A ground rod right down there feeding the panel, which is uh, going inside. It also back feeds into these two here, which is telephone, your internet, and uh, cable TV internet. It also feeds it here as well. And all of the common grounds in the house, your refrigerator, your stove, everything that has a ground to it is tying back to this location. So this is your uh, central ground right here. So your data in your data room, your data closet, uh, your home lab should all be tied into the same ground. Now you may be thinking, hey, wait a minute, my data room is right behind this wall right here. So why don't I drive a ground rod here, go in through the wall, tie it into my little rack, and I'm good, right? Hmm, not so fast. You do something like this, you're asking for trouble. Let's go take a look. All right, let's see if we can make some sense of this. I think that scenario is probably more common than you think. I think a lot of people think, hey, if I just put another ground rod there, it's double protection and, and, and it works really good that way. Uh, let me debunk that, okay? Let me, let me help you out in uh, this scenario. here. And, and I think a lot of people really do think that. They think, well, if I just put another ground rod, then uh, that's, that's all I need to do and I'm, I'm, I'm doubled up, I'm protected. Uh, sounds right, but it's not. Let me, let me bring you to a drawing here, a illustration, this, this will, I think shed some light. If you're like me, you like to see stuff, it, it helps it sink in better. So let me, let me just kind of give you this uh, visual here so you can kind of follow along. This is kind of what we got, the, or, or kind of what we were just talking about there. And, and let's just say this is the, the meter, this is, this is the house. And this is the data rack that you have. Okay, the house has its uh, ground rod right below. You saw that out there. 
uh, and this gives the ground the common ground to the entire building. Over here you want to drill, uh, drill a, a drive a ground rod into the ground here outside where your rack is, penetrate through the building, attach it to the rack and uh, all your equipment. Sounds good. It really does. It's, 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 it sounds great. Let's take out this bonding conductor here first. Let's, let's take this out, act like this is not here. And if you have this scenario here, you're going to have, first of all, th this common ground is going to be in this rack because the, the, the things that you have plugged in to the house power here on that, that third prong, on the three prongs, is going to be the, the common ground to the building. So you're going to have equipment attached to this ground and the ground that's coming from the common ground is going to be attached to the equipment as well. So you're going to have, you have two separate grounds just inside this rack, not to mention anything that's just over here. Like let's just say you have a camera or something like that that's plugged in and you have a data line going from, you have it plugged into power and you got data line going across to the rack. Um, if if the, the the ground potentials are set or different, and they and they will be, you've got a ground rod over here, and you've got a ground rod over here. The the grounding potential is is going is going to be different. It just it just is. So when you have a surge, when you have lightning, something like that, they're going to be at two different levels, and you know it's 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 going to surge between the two, and you're going to have unwanted current flow between the two. So you, you don't. You don't want that. And inside the rack here, like I said, you're going to have your common house power ground in this rack too. So it's going to be just battling back and forth, you know, it, pow, it, it, it's, it'll be the firecracker in the rack. Okay. So you don't, you don't want this. You, you have too much instability this way as well. Also, if, if you're a, an audio guy, or gal, if you're an audio person that, or a video person for that matter, you know that if you have two ground, or I hope you know this, if you don't, you do now. If you have two different grounds like this, you're gonna create a, a what we call a ground loop. And what that does is it, it creates hums, buzzes, clicks, pops, you name it. It wreaks havoc on audio gear, okay? Your recordings will stink. You won't want to do that. So that alone right there tells you, mm, bad idea, bad idea. If it, if it creates problems in audio, it's going to create problems in data too, especially when you have those surges or a lightning strike. It, 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 just a bad idea. Let's move down to, oh, let's go back up here first. Okay, the bonding, if you have the bonding together, it, does, will that help if you, let's put the green line back in there. Does that help if you tie this one and this one together? Uh, yeah, it, it, it will help. It, it will help. It'll take most of the load of that uh, uh, current flow. Most of the current flow will go through there. Yeah, it, it's, that's, that's, that is true, but some of it won't. Uh, it's going to take the least resistance, right? So it may be your data line which this line really should be in here too, but between equipment, it, it's, it's, it may go through the data line. And if it does, pow, no good. So this, again, bad idea. Moving down here, this, this is the proper way of doing any data center, anything. You, 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 you find your common uh, ground, uh, a lot of times that's a water pipe, you know, because your water pipe should be grounded. You know, if they're copper pipes, should be grounded to the common. And that gives you that common ground. It's all common. But this down here is the way it should look. One ground, one common ground, one ground system there going to the building and going to your data rack as well. When you do this, then that unwanted current flow, boom, it goes straight to ground it didn't have to decide because it's, there's only one place to go and it's going to go here first and it's not going to tear up your data. It's not going to uh, mess up any of your equipment because it, there, it's, it, there's nothing to flow through it. It's, it's all one common place. So this is the way it needs to look like just right here. One ground rod 
going to one common ground, going to your building, going to your data equipment as well. Now, I want to I want to take you out to our broadcast transmitter site, our, our tower site. Uh, we go out there a lot. It's our second home. But the reason I want to go out there is because the equipment's easy to, to, to see uh, exactly how things are, are grounded. Plus, you know, it's, it, again, it's a tower site, so it's, it's a large hundreds of foot stick up in the air waiting for lightning to hit. So we have to do things uh, a little on the safe side. So this is a good place to show you some of those practices that, that we do out at the tower site. So let's, uh, let's go on that road trip. All right, when it comes down to it, you need a good grounding system for your data network, your home lab, all of those things need good protection with grounding. But to give yourself a little bit more insurance for your network, there's a couple other things that uh, we haven't even talked about yet. And one is surge suppression. You need surge suppression. We get those in our UPSs, standalone units. We're gonna show you some of these here in just a second, but also, uh, shielded cable. Shielded cable is so important, especially if you, have, if you have any outdoor equipment like PoE cameras. Maybe you have a microwave link that's a point-to-point -point link that you're going maybe to a barn or another building. When these cables are outside, oh boy, lightning just likes to, static electricity likes to hit cables. But when they're shielded like this, yes, they do cost a little bit more, but when you run shielded cable, whoo, man what a protection you'll have. Let's take a look at some uh, surge suppressors that we have on the wall right here. I got this one loose and I wanna show you the inside of it. First of all, this is more of a, a commercial made unit, but uh, when it comes down to it, I think it's, it's probably just as good as the Ubiquiti or any of those inline type uh, surge suppressors that you can buy. It works good. I wouldn't spend the big money on it. I'd just get one of those Ubiquities. They work well too. Uh, here it is here. It's got a little motherboard on it. Uh, let me get up here where you can actually see it. And uh, got the ground lug to go to our uh, grounding bus here inside the building. You got your in, you got your out. It could be out, in, in, out. It doesn't matter which side you put these on. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just flowing through gigabit uh, speeds. Doesn't matter. But again, if it's going outside, we want to make sure that it's shielded, and this is shielded cable. In fact, you can see the shielded connectors on here. Let me get up a little closer so you can see that. Yep, some shielded connectors here, so that uh, all the way up the tower, uh, we're not going to have a problem with a lightning strike or anything like that because you know it's grounded all the way from the top down to the bottom. Both of these are the same. Uh, this is for one microwave that we have. We have a backup uh, microwave that's here. So we got two of them on the tower. We also have our cradle point coming in this way. Of course, it doesn't go outside, but we want to make sure it's secure as well. So we, we, like, to, we like to double, <laughs> we like to have that, that double insurance when it comes to our data to make sure that, you know, now will lightning hit? Oh, lightning can do whatever it wants, and you know that happens. It's happened to us, even, even though we're shielded, it can happen. I mean, we got a big tower outside that, you know, lightning says, hey, let's go over there, and, and it, it does. So sometimes it could be uh, the way a, a, a lightning will, will strike the tower, and, and, and yeah, it'll bounce around. You never know what's going to happen. But we like to do our best and, and shield everything, make sure everything is grounded. Of course, they come out of here. See the ground lugs right here? The ground lugs comes around and it attaches to, to our grounding bar up here, which is the common ground for this whole building, all attached together on all of our equipment to give us the best possible shielding and protection of our data equipment. <laughs> okay, hey, before we get started on this, uh, it's kind of ironic we're talking about static electricity, lightning, things like that. A huge thunderstorm going 
over our transmitter site right now. So we're gonna be a little extra cautious and touching things just in case. You just never, ever, ever know. So uh, here we go. This right here is something you might wanna put in your home lab or your data center or whatever you've got. And uh, it, it just makes things so much nicer and prettier. This is a grounding bus bar. And I got it off of Amazon. And I wanna say at the time of this video, I paid under $50 for it. I'll put the link in the description below. You can check it out. Pretty nice. You got your common uh, ground coming in one side, and then you've got 16 lugs across the top to attach all of your equipment that you want to ground. So pretty nice. Uh, this was uh, uh, a pretty nice find uh, being Amazon. I didn't think Amazon would carry something like this in the, the more commercial industrial side, but, but they do. And uh, so you might want to check that in the description below. Okay, on the back of most UPSs, especially your home UPS, you're going to have your outlets. You're going to have a row of them that's protected. And you're going to have another row that's protected with battery backup. Most of us know that. But some of you may not realize that the RJ45 jacks on the back of your UPS, you might want to check, see if you got it. If so, that's a surge suppressor right there. Yeah, you plug in your network and bada bing bada boom there you go you've got protection on your network well hey did you like the video hopefully you did if you did like and subscribe let us know in the comments below what you're doing on your network to protect it from surges lightning all of those things and maybe some plans that you may have in the future for your home lab